Welcome, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're tuning in th from. Thank you for being here. This is Spirit Matters, your daily Bhakti Center podcast. Coming at you live from New York City. My name is Dal Grunga. I'm here with Kishore Chandra and Achuta Gopi. Um, should I give announcements first or ask how you guys are doing and then announcements? I feel like if I ask how you're doing, that kind of leads into the conversation. Should I just do announcements quick or should I do a check? -in? I don't want to be rude. Like I'm just going to start giving announcements and not see, see how you guys are doing. Do you the just like, you just like to help, please. <laughs> do the announcements. Do the announcements. Okay. We have very, we have very, I created some standard announcements. Um, Spirit Matters at BhaktiCenter.org. We want to hear from you. We want to know if you're out there and you're listening, you have a story, you have a question. You just want to let us know your name and that you're out there. Just write to us at spiritmatters at bhaktisender.org and we'd be so happy to be in touch with you and uh, answer any questions and just support you on your spiritual journey. We also, we tune in live every day. We have a live Zoom audience. If you want to join our Zoom audience, just go to bhaktisender.org and find Spirit Matters or just Google search Bhakti Center and Spirit Matters and you can get the Zoom link there. Um, and we also have a WhatsApp group that we've created for our family to keep in touch with each other and also share updates as they come. So if you write to us at spiritmatters at bucketsinner.org, we can get you on the WhatsApp. And importantly, we have a beginning bhakti community group starting. And those are a great way for you and anyone to um, be connected and get your spiritual path kickstarted. We have Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time starting with Brajarani and Pat, although I forget her new name, something Prema, I didn't update that, Prema Chandrika, but that's somebody else. Anyways, two beautiful people. They read The Journey Within. It's like a community group. We also have an online Fridays uh, student group, and we also have a Saturday Spanish group that's starting. You can find those all on our website. We also have some growing bhakti groups. If you have a spiritual practice already and you want to just get more sangha, we have a Friday evenings with Gojuma Pran. That's in person. Beautiful. Even though it's listed on our online page, maybe we've got to adjust that on our online page, but it's in person by Gojuma. So we have community groups at the Bhakti Center. Go to our webpage and find those out and stay connected. Anything else announcement wise? No. Okay, how are you guys doing? Feeling blessed. She's feeling blessed. You short time? Feeling sheltered. Feeling sheltered. Okay. Anyone feeling tired? Anyone feeling. <laughs> okay. All right, we're doing great. We're reading through the Bhagavad Gita. We're reading the Bhagavad Gita, and we're getting towards the end of the second chapter. It's been a beautiful journey. We've been discussing the qualities of a person who is in spiritual consciousness and how they move and act in the world um, and how much of it is determined by one's ability to um, sort of, this is really what we're going to get here in this next verse, is one's ability to not be thrown off of course by the upheavals or the explosions and implosions of the material world and how to do that. And so we have this beautiful verse, verse 58. Um, should we just read it? When do you guys want to read verse 58? I can read it. I have it here. So it says, one who is able to withdraw his senses from sense objects as the tortoise draws its limbs within the shell is firmly fixed in perfect consciousness. Mm. And this is this is um, the beginning of the answer to the question of how does this person who is in a, in a transcendental consciousness, um, how do they sit? And by how do they sit, it means more like, how are they responding to the outside world? How are they dealing with all of the kind of like agitations and you know sense i remember last week i think it was where dayal kind of gave this breakdown of how our senses work with the material world so it's really 
asking like, how does this person who is situated in transcendence, but lives here in the material world, like how do they interact with the material world, especially when things are coming into their purview? And so I really like this response that Krishna is giving that it's like, they are able to withdraw from the sense objects. And that's a really high, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a high bar in a sense, because, you know, just think about all the times where you were not able to <laughs> withdraw from the sense objects, you know, just think of like that piece of cake or that piece of ice cream or whatever it is for you that you're like, well, I'll have like one more bite or one more piece or one more this or one more that. And it's, it's almost like you can't, you know, you can't stop yourself. You're just like, ugh, ugh, and then you do it. And so the, 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 the sense objects appear in so many different ways, um, food and visual and et cetera. Um, but this is a really nice verse. I really like it. And the purport's really fascinating too, but I want to hear what Achuta has to say. Um, he generally doesn't want to hear what I have to say. No, it's usually <laughs> already said the thing. I've usually already said everything that I need to say. And it's like, give everyone else some time. Um, uh, I like this verse because actually this was, this used to be one of the verses that I was just always like, womp womp. Womp womp. Um, because I think that sometimes in the, in the course of performing devotional service and watching others move through life, um, you can kind of feel like a little bit callous. And so this was one of those verses that made me feel like this is gonna make people callous. Mm. Uh, and now I've kind of changed my view on that because I have come to the firm conclusion with full conviction that there's nothing in Bhagavad Gita that is meant to make people callous. Mm. Um, and so the point here is that things don't stop happening to the tortoise. Things, things are don't not stop happening to the tortoise. That's a uh, that's a hashtag T-shirt. Yeah, Put that somewhere in the, okay. in the list right. of the spreadsheet. Um, things are not going to stop happening to us. It it comes down to the point of okay things have happened. Now, what does that mean for me? And then even on a deeper level, it's like, okay, and now what does that mean for me as a spirit soul? Mm. It's, it, it begs the question at every moment, who am I? And what am I identifying with? And so it, it's like Krishna is telling Arjuna, because he's, he's asking, you know, how does this person in transcendence walk, talk, sit, act, all of these things. And he's saying, well, it is going to be a constant question of what is their mindset. A constant question of every day waking up and saying, what am I identifying with today? Mm. What, what is it that I am really um, feeling genuinely connected to today? And so things don't stop happening to the tortoise, but the tortoise is not thinking, oh, great, an alligator tried to eat me today. And maybe that's all I'm destined for. You know, the, the tortoise is like, I'm, I'm going to withdraw now. Um, I'm going to go inside my, my safe space. And, and that's that. And I think that this, this description is kind of so apt and really adorable because I like turtles a lot. <laughs> um, that all of us have an innate, God-given safe space from all of the troubles and stripes of the world. There is an inner safe space. And at any moment, when life gets too much, when things get too much, we can take a moment and withdraw. Everything will still be there when we come back. Um, and so I kind of like it because it doesn't teach us to be callous anymore like I used to think it does. It teaches us to take a minute to check what we are identifying with. And it also lets us know that we can take a minute before we respond, before we react. We can take a minute and retreat into our safe space before we 
take another step before we move forward we can take an we can take a moment and say okay krishna i don't know what's best for me i need help i need your guidance i need your assistance okay. and so on the purport Srila Prabhupada hints at that like a krishna conscious person is using their senses for the service of krishna which means sometimes we won't know what that's like we won't have all the answers but Krishna is hinting, but there's an, there's an inner safe space. And not only is there an inner safe space, you are never alone in that inner safe space. I'm always right there, right next to you. Two birds, one tree. And at any moment, we can retreat inward, look over to our, our Krishna bird and say, help, guide me. What does it look like for you to withdraw and go into your inner safe space? <clears throat> Recently, I feel like I've been doing this thing where I have literally been like stopping myself in the midst of, of mm. things that are going on, like things that are getting on my nerves and annoying me or whatever. And I've literally stopped and said, okay. And if I choose, this situation could have nothing to do with me. If I allow it, it could have everything to do with me. But if I give myself the chance, this situation could have nothing to do with me. Yes, that I mean, that doesn't mean I allow myself to become a doormat, whatever. It, it still means that I, I stick up for myself, that I speak up for myself, that I handle things in a different way. But if I give myself the second to say, this is a moment that I'm going to handle. And then afterward, it, it doesn't have to consume me. It allows me to handle myself in a more Krishna conscious manner. It doesn't allow my senses, my anger, my passion to get away from me. It puts you in the driver's seat, which we'll be hearing more about how the senses can drive the the car of our intelligence and all that stuff. And so it really allows me to be in the driver's seat again, instead of being controlled by the circumstances and by everything happening around me. Um, and I, I feel like that often is the most troubling aspect of things when we feel helpless, powerless, and out of control by everything that's happening around us. And so thankfully, I am not usually in a situation where I am really just helpless and powerless and everything is out of my control. There are some situations where people are thrust into situations where they really, nothing is within their hands. Um, but I've thankfully not been in those situations. And so I'm looking and saying, okay, now I get to choose how I react. Now I get to choose how I conduct myself. I don't have to let the anger or the irritation or whatever take over so much that I forget who I am. Hmm. I appreciate a lot how this, this, this finding inner safe space and you know, the question of what does it look like for you to withdraw and find your inner safe space? Because it's not just I'm withdrawing, but I'm, I'm withdrawing into my little cocoon, my shell, my what is in that inner sanctum and building that inner sanctum for us. And I think also on the flip side, uh, recognizing that everybody needs that from times. And I know I'm the kind of person that it's like, if someone's quiet or withdrawing, it's like, what's going on? Tell me what's happening. Like, I, and I need to be like, I need to pry my, like somebody withdraws into their shell. And I'm like, I'm like peeking my head and through the peephole, like into the shell, man, like, what's going on in here you know and I think that and, and we can take it the wrong way sometimes like it can because it can feel like an affront it could feel like a disrespect or a callousness and, and I think that 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 recognizing that everybody needs that and when we allow that for other people without because sometimes we go into our safes we, 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 we retreat we withdraw because we don't know how to respond and then when we come out, we realize that everyone's gone because, oh, the world moved on without me. And everyone thought I was just being rude or disinterested or that I was angry at them. I'm like, no, I'm not angry at you. I'm just like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to respond to life right now. 
Like, I don't know how to engage. I don't know how to respond. I, I, I'm feeling overwhelmed and I'm hiding. Um, and I think that for it, 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 it takes a lot to be able to give compassion to people where they're in that space. Um, we're like, how do we not leave anyone behind? Because everybody needs that connection, if they, even if they seem like they are withdrawing. And so I think on both sides of it, for, for, I'm just saying where it comes alive for me in that respect is um, learning how to be patient with people while they, while they take the moments that they need in order to reorient themselves. I'm going to flip the script on that a little bit because I Ooh. feel like um, flipping the, I flipped the script on Chuti. He's flipping the script on me. We're going to I feel like it's really interesting. I feel like it's really interesting. I think it's a societal thing and cultural thing because like here we're reading Bhagavad Gita 5,000 years ago where Krishna's like, yeah, be the tortoise, go into your shell, like do it. You know, like if you need to recalibrate um, to figure out your relationship with this, uh, the sense objects and uh, you know you might not be able to figure it out right now then this is what the sage does so go for it and I think like a societal thing right now that we're dealing with um, definitely a cultural thing is that like there's a lot of emphasis on like how we present to the world you know like if you think about like Instagram and you think about all this stuff it's like how we are out there and it's almost like it's almost like without even thinking, there is negative connotations placed on people who withdraw. You know, it's like immediate, like one of my pet peeves is when I'm withdrawing and everyone's like, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing's wrong, yo. I'm like, please, you know, like I'm just, I'm just chilling. And I think that there's this like such a negative connotation of just like people who are maybe a little bit more introverted. We live in a very extroverted society, you know, it's like, what can you do? And now, what can you produce and how do this and da, 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 and then et cetera. And it's very, it almost seems like very antithetical a little bit to like what's being said here. It's like, go in, go within, withdraw, you know, figure yourself out, figure out how you are in relationship with the senses. And I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to mention that, flip the script a little bit, because I don't, I don't necessarily think it's like, I think it's a balance for sure. You know, it's not like we can just be withdrawn all the time. Arjuna has that whole journey in Bhagavad Gita where he's like, okay, great. Withdrawing is the answer. I'm withdrawing, you know, and Krishna's like, no, that's not exactly what I said. Um, but at the same time, I think uh, Krishna's saying like, there is a time to withdraw. There is a time to go out and, and be. And I think it's, I, I really like the, the frame that you put it into Doyal of just like being patient because I think that that goes both ways. You know, it's like, the people who are over here need to be patient with the turtle people and the turtle people need to be patient with the people that are, you know, ah, over here. And I think that that's and the psychos. It's, it's a, huh? The turtle the people psychos. need to be patient with the psychos. I feel like it's a, with the hairs. Oh, I love that, Sydney. I feel like it's a mutual patience and an understanding that we will switch positions, you know, like there will be sometimes when we're over here and there will be sometimes when we're over there. Um, but not necessarily because I do feel that I do feel that there's some strange cultural negative association with like withdrawing, you know. I also think, um, I mean, like you said, you know, people get kind of like a bad reputation for withdrawing, and I'm like guilty. I um, and I have taken to flat out telling people, I'm like, you know, sometimes I'm like, you don't want a response from me right now. And there have been people who've been like, but, but like, what are you thinking? What do you, like, you have to tell me, what are you thinking? I'm like, you don't want a response from me right now. You really, really, I, I've gotten to know myself enough to know that you do not want a response from me. Right I'm now. doing you a favor. Please, it really is. Please and I'm respect like, that. And you don't want to rush my response for you. You really want me to think this over. If you still want to be involved with me, you will give me the, the, the ability to think it over. And I think sometimes that jump to like, but what are you thinking? But what are you thinking? But what are you thinking? Is it actually has nothing to do with the other person. We are feeling insecure about our position. And so then we're like, but we, but I need you to tell me how secure I am. Like, tell me it's okay. Tell me it's gonna be okay. Tell me things are gonna be fine. And I'm like, 
well, I don't know that yet. <laughs> like, to be honest, I don't know if things are going to be fine yet. Mm. Um, and so what I've found is like, actually that urge to be like, but what is it? But you have to be like, is a clue and a hint from your own nervous system and body that you also need to retreat. Mm. Like that urge to, to push into somebody else's space means that you also need to like whoop, mirror that back on yourself and say, okay, wait, what is it that I'm really pushing for? Yeah. Am I pushing for them to tell me that everything's going to be okay? And then maybe I need to tell myself that everything's going to be okay. Whether things work out the way I want them to, whether things don't work out the way I want them to, like things are going to be, it's going to be okay. I don't have to identify with this moment for the rest of my life. No matter what happens, I'm, I'm going to still be me. Um, I, I might be a sadder version of me and that's also okay to admit. Okay. And, and so I think sometimes we spend so much time just not being real with one another. I am. Um, and Sachin Andan Maharaj has also said this. And he, he said he, he went to someone's house and they said, oh, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm glad to see you. I listen to your lectures every day. And he was getting really excited. He was like, oh, wow, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm glad. Thank you. And then they came up and they're like, yes, I just I want to announce you. What, what was your name again? And he said he was thinking, why do we do this to each other? Like, it would have just been much more authentic and genuine and real, much more of a real connection. If he just said, I'm so glad to have you here. I'm so sorry. I want to get to know you better. What's your name? Then, oh, I listen to you every day and all of these things. He's like, because then it just, it feels so much more empty. Um, and I can attest to that. There have been people who have said, I'm your huge fan. I saw you at so-and-so and you were in this place and I'm like, no, that wasn't me. And they're like, no, absolutely, I saw you. And I'm like, no, that wasn't I've, I've, I've never been. There have been place. people who have said like, oh, I met you in Mayapur. I'm like, you didn't. And like, I did, it was 2019 and I met you in Mayapur and I was like, you did not because I have not been to Mayapur. I was not in Mayapur in 2019. And they're like, but I met you. I was like, you didn't. And now I'm questioning all of your fandom. I'm questioning all of you right now. Um, and so sometimes everything. it's so important for us just to be real with one another. Um, it, it's so important for us just to say, I'm, I, I, I want to know what you're thinking. The person's like, ah, but I'm not ready to say it yet. And it's okay to say, okay, I'm going to wait and try and be patient, but I'm also going to let you know I'm afraid. I'm afraid of losing our relationship. I'm afraid of losing you. I'm afraid of, I'm afraid. And the person can say, okay, well, I, I really just need a minute. Sometimes it's important for us to be real with one another. Yeah. Not in like the messy way, but in authentically communicating with one another, it's okay to have fears. Yeah. It's okay to feel insecure. And not in a, I have an avoidant attachment style. Like it's, it's okay to not use all of the, like the new age jargon and to just say, I think I'm feeling like really insecure about where we are right now. Yeah. I think it'd be a great reversal to um, tell somebody you met me in my, yeah, but that wasn't the first time we met, you know, we were in Chicago in 2018. And you told me that, you know, beforehand and, and, and see it like, they're like, no, that's not true. No, I met you in Chicago in 2018. Or if they're like, yeah, I remember. Then it's like, whoa, this is getting well, really, not only that, it's getting really I trippy. Think, I'm, I think I'm going to start. Oh, man, this is going to ruin my plans because this is like televised. But um, I, I think I'm going to start like, oh, my God, I remember. But do you also remember I lent you those I lent you like 20 bucks. Yeah. Because you really needed to go get such a, I'm just going to start. Train ticket. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to go with it now. They're like, oh my God, I met you and it was 2019 and it's going to be places that I know I wasn't. I'm like, oh my God, yes. And then you borrowed that 20 bucks. And then we'll just see, because now, now you're, now you're in a pickle. 
And they're like, yes, I gave it back to you. <laughs> and I'll be like, but you didn't. Um, I thank you for the beautiful discussion. Um, we're getting towards the end of our time here. And I wanted to ask Kimberly for our takeaways. Kimberly is our takeaway. -er. What do you got for us, Kimberly? If anybody's got takeaways, they want to put in the chat here. Some takeaway phrases or some points to, to keep as we withdraw. We all go and we're, we're all going to like, okay, I'm just shutting down. I'm withdrawing right now after this episode. We're taking away that things don't stop happening to the turtle. And like the turtle, we all have a space, safe inner space where Krishna is always there. And to be patient with ourselves and each other when we all eventually retreat and withdraw. Well, closing words, Achoo Tsun Kishore. I'm going to read Pasha's takeaway because I really like it and it's how I feel. So Pasha says, if we can't be real with others, how can we be real with Krishna? And I love that. That's exactly how I feel. Thank you, Pasha. Yeah, I feel like one step further. If we can't be real with Krishna, how can we be real with anybody, ourselves included? Like, it's a, it's a cycle, you know? My, my closing thought is just... Um, where do I withdraw? You know, I was like, um, this, this idea of like, you know, in my downtime, am I really resting or am I just like dissociating and like vegging out because like I, I, I'm in a freeze mode and I actually can't deal with life. And rather than like me actually resting and recharging in a safe holistic space, I'm actually just like trying to disassociate with myself by just distracting myself because I can't deal with what's happening inside like people are like how are you doing and the real answer is like the real answer isn't like great or not great the real answer is like i have no idea <laughs> like i haven't checked in with like, i got i'm just moving along i don't even i can't or don't even want to answer that question and so i think that um for me like the idea like again back to the verse of withdrawing like a tortoise um is actually the idea of like sensual urges that are pushing me here, there, and everywhere into places I don't want to be, like, am I actually master of self in that way where I'm able to make decisions and move myself in the direction I want to, rather than being, Prabhupada mentions it, being like a slave to our senses in the purport. And so I think for me, it's like, what are the nourishing ways that I withdraw and spend downtime and retreat into myself? Um, and, um, just a question, point of reflection for me to think about. Okay, everybody, thank you so much. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Thank you all so, so much for being here. Everyone who's tuning in live and listening out there, we love you guys. Please, please be well. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.